Hello friends, welcome to YouTube channel Electronics. In this video, we will learn what is modulation, where it is used and different types of modulation techniques. What is modulation? In telecommunication, to transmit low frequency message signal to far distances is a challenging task. So we will involve another high frequency signal. It can be called as carrier signal. Now we just superimpose both signals on one another to generate a new signal. This process is called modulation. This modulation signal can be transmitted to far distances effectively. This modulation technique can be explained with a simple example. Suppose if we want to travel a far distance like any other city or state, what we will do? We will take any mode of transport to reach the destination. For example, a bus. Here the person can be represented as a message signal and the bus can be represented presented as a carrier signal. If the person travels by bus, he can reach destination effectively. Likewise, if we superimpose low frequency message signal on a high frequency carrier signal, it can be transmitted to far distances effectively. Modulation technique is widely used in telecommunication. It increases the strength of the message signal so that messages can travel far distances. Modulation is used in both wide and wireless communication to transfer information. The information can be of any form, whether it may be a text message or a voice signal or a video signal. We use modulation technique to transfer information effectively. Let's take an example of a voice signal. The human voice signal contains frequencies up to 3 kHz. This low frequency or the message signal is known as the baseband signal. And as we know that the audible spectrum is in the range of 20 to 20 kilohertz. If you want to transmit this message signal to far distances, then there are some limitations. We will discuss them one by one. First one, interference. Just imagine that if multiple persons are talking to only one person at a time, then that person won't understand anything. Likewise, let's say if multiple voice signals which are around same frequency range are transmitted without modulation through a single channel then there will be interference between them and at the receivers end, nobody will be able to receive the transmitted signal but if you modulate each signal with a carrier signal and all the carrier signals have different frequencies which are relatively far away from each other, then there won't be any interference between them. And all the signals can be demodulated at the receiver's end. So the each message signal can be easily retrieved. One of the best example is the working of FM radio stations in your city, where FM stands for frequency modulation. Each station operates or transmits modulated voice signals in a specified frequency which are relatively far away from each other so that there won't be any interference between them. The radio receiver receives these waves and demodulates only the desired radio frequency so that we can hear that particular station. So using modulation, we can reduce the interference between signals and at the same time, we can also achieve the frequency multiplexing. Here we can transmit different message signals simultaneously by modulating each of them with different carrier frequencies. Hence the frequency multiplexing is very much possible. Now the most important reason reason for modulation is to reduce the antenna size. In wireless signal transmission, ensuring the correct size of antenna is very crucial due to the concept of resonant frequency. The size of the antenna is proportional to the lambda, that is wavelength of the transmitted signal. Here depending on which type of antenna we are using, it will be the fraction of transmitted signal wavelength. So let's say antenna size is equal to lambda by 2. The relationship between the frequency and the wavelength can be given by the expression c equals to lambda into f. Here c is nothing but speed of flight and lambda and f are wavelength and frequency of the transmitted signals respectively. For example, if you want to transmit this 3 kilohertz voice signal directly, let's calculate the antenna size given that f equals to 3 kilohertz and as we know speed of flight 
C equals to 3 into 10 to the power of 8 meters per second. Here we can use this expression lambda equals to C by F. So lambda equals to 3 into 10 to the power of 8 meters per second divided by 3 kilohertz. That gives the transmitted signal wavelength as 100 kilometers. Now the antenna size equals to lambda by 2. That is 100 divided by 2. It means the transmitting antenna size must be 50 kilometers if you want to wirelessly transmit this 3 kilohertz voice signal. It is very impractical to install such a big 50 kilometers antenna. Here if you modulate this voice signal with a 30 megahertz carrier signal before transmitting, now the transmitting frequency f equals to 30 megahertz. So the wavelength of this modulated signal lambda equals to c by f that equals to 3 into 10 to the power of 8 meters per second divided by 30 into 10 to the power of 6 that equals to 10 meters. Now the antenna size l equals to 10 by 2 that equals to 5 meters. This is very practical size. Therefore, we can reduce the antenna size by using the modulation technique. So, these are the some important aspects for using modulation technique in telecommunication. Modulation can be broadly divided into two types. First one, analog modulation. Second one, digital modulation. If the message signal is analog form, it is known as analog modulation. And if the message signal is in digital form, then it is known as the digital modulation. This analog modulation can be further subdivided into two parts, continuous wave modulation and pulse modulation. Here the first division is made based on message signal, but the second division is made based on carrier signal. So if the carrier signal signal is a continuous wave like sine wave signal then it is known as the continuous wave modulation. Similarly if the carrier signal is a pulse signal then it is known as the pulse modulation. Here this continuous wave modulation can be further subdivided into mainly three types that is amplitude modulation, frequency modulation and phase modulation. As we know that any signal for example a sine wave has three basic properties. They are first one amplitude, second one frequency and the last one phase. In modulation process one of these properties of the carrier signal is varied in accordance with the message signal. So in case of amplitude modulation the amplitude of the carrier wave varies in according to the message signal. Here you can see the amplitude modulation signal. We can observe that the shape of the high frequency carrier wave changes in according to the message signal. Likewise, in frequency modulation, the frequency of the carrier wave varies according to the message signal. Here you can see the frequency modulation signal. We can see that with the increase in the amplitude of the message signal, the frequency of the modulated signal has increased. Similarly, with the reduction in the amplitude, the frequency of the modulated signal signal has reduced. Next one phase modulation. In phase modulation the phase of the carrier wave varies in according to the message signal. Here you can see the phase modulation signal. We can observe that when the amplitude of the message signal is falling the carrier signal is stretching. It is showing phase lag in the modulated signal. Due to this frequency of the signal gets decreased. Similarly when the amplitude of the message signal is rising the carrier signal is compressed. It is showing phase lead in the modulated signal. Due to this compression, the resultant signal frequency gets increased. For a sine wave signal, the phase modulated signal somewhat similar to the frequency modulated signal. We will discuss this phase modulation clearly in another video. Now let's see the different types of pulse modulation techniques. The pulse modulation is mainly divided into four types. First one, pulse amplitude modulation, second one pulse width modulation, third one pulse position modulation and the last one pulse code modulation. Before going to discuss them one by one, you must remember that pulse modulation is an analog modulation technique. So the message signal is an analog signal. But here the carrier signal is a pulse of a finite frequency. So in pulse amplitude modulation, the output of the PAM signal will appears like this. 
if we observe the output signal here the pulse duration is same but the amplitude of the pulse is varying according to the input message signals variation likewise in case of pulse width modulation the output waveform looks like this If we observe over here, the amplitude of the pulses are same, but the width of the pulses are changing in according to the message signals variation. We can easily identify the superimposed message signal at the output. The output signal width is increasing as the message signals amplitude is increasing and vice versa. We will discuss PWM in detail in another video. Next one, pulse position modulation. In this type of modulation technique, Technique, the output waveform looks like this. The output pulses width and amplitude are same, but the position of the modulated pulses changes in according to the variations in the message signals input. If we observe the output over here, as the amplitude of the input signal is increasing, then the modulated pulses repetitive time period is increasing. And as the input signals amplitude is decreasing, the modulated pulses repetitive time is decreasing. Now let's see how PPM signal can be generated using PWM signal. If our message signal is a sine wave, then the PWM signal will appear like this. The width of the pulses increases with respect to the amplitude of the message signal. Here, if we draw vertical lines at every falling edge of the PWM pulses, the PPM signal will appear at every falling edge of the PWM signal. This is how PPM signal can be generated using PWM signal. Now let's move to the next modulation technique that is pulse code modulation technique. In PCM technique, the message signal is sampled at a finite time interval and each sampled value is quantitized using quantitization process. And then by using the analog to digital converter, the message signal can be retrieved. For example, if the sampled value is encoded in 8 bits then for every sampled value we will get a pulse code of 8 bits this is the clear overview of the ppm signal we will discuss pulse code modulation technique in detail in another video so far we have discussed different types of analog modulation techniques here the message signal is analog in nature so now let's briefly discuss about digital modulation techniques there are mainly three different types of digital modulation modulation techniques first one amplitude shift keying second one frequency shift keying and the final one phase shift keying in digital modulation techniques the message signal is in digital form now let's discuss them one by one first one amplitude shift keying so this is the digital message signal and this is the analog carrier wave. So in amplitude shift keying technique, the output of the modulated signal will appear like this. If we observe over here, the amplitude of the modulated signal changes in accordance with the digital message signal. The binary 1 is represented with high amplitude of the modulated wave and the binary 0 is represented with low amplitude of the modulated signal. Here we can say that this amplitude shift key is nothing but one form of digital amplitude modulation technique. Next one frequency shift keying. In this technique both digital message signal and the analog carrier waves are superimposed on each other such that the output of the FSK looks like this. Here the frequency of the modulated signal varies in according to the digital message signal. Here the binary 1 is represented with the high frequency and binary 0 is represented with the low frequency of the modulated signal. Now the final one phase shift keying. In this technique both digital message signal and analog carrier waves are superimposed on one another such that the resultant phase shift keying modulated signal will appear like this. If we observe over here whenever the message signal is changing from 1 to 0 or 0 to 1 then there is a 180 degrees phase shift occurs in the modulated signal. 
signal. That is all about the digital and analog modulation technique. Telecommunication technology is nothing but increasing data transfer speed and efficiency. But if you use any of these modulation techniques, we couldn't get a high data transfer speed. However, there is one special modulation technique which is called QAM Quadrature Amplitude Modulation Technique. If you use this, we will be able to send 6 bits of data at a time as a single electromagnetic wave. Let's see how an analog QAM works. Just take two message signals. By using a carrier wave, the first signal is amplitude modulated. And for the second signal, we use same carrier wave. But by using 90 degree phase shifter, we shift the phase of this carrier wave by 90 degrees. Now the second signal is also amplitude modulated. Modulated. Now these two amplitude modulated signals are mixed together to form a single multiplexed signal. The interesting thing is that on the receiver side we can easily demodulate this multiplexed signal to get original signal. In case of digital QAM, a similar approach is used. Here instead of analog signals, different combinations of digital bits are combined together to produce multiplexed signals. Now let's see how a digital QAM works. In digital communication, any form of data is nothing but combination of ones and zeros. For example, in a 16-bit QAM, we pack 4 bits together. Based on the values of the 4 bits, we can generate multiplexed signals. These multiplexer signals will have different phase angles and amplitudes. So, in a 16-bit QAM, such 16-bit values can be represented by adjusting the phase and amplitude of the multiplexer signal. Now, we will combine all these multiplexer signals to form a single multiplexer signal. Now, this single multiplexer signal can be used for the transmission. Here, we can see the different amplitude and phase electromagnetic signals. In this single Single multiplexed signal they represent various 4 bits of data. Here the same analog QAM modulation technique is used to mix the amplitude modulated signals to develop a single multiplexed digital QAM signal. As we have seen in this QAM technique, two carrier signals that are 90 degrees out of phase are used. Hence the word quadrature is used to refer this modulation technique. If you use normal modulation technique instead of QAM, we can only send one electromagnetic signal at a time. But in case of 16-bit QAM, we can send 4 bits of multiplexed signal. Thus, 16-bit QAM increases the data transfer speed by 4 times. Scientists have even achieved 2 56 bits QAM that increases the data transfer speed by 8 times compared to normal modulation technique which is now using in 5G communication. 256 bit QAM uses 8 bits of data at a time. That's all about what is modulation, why it is used and different types of modulation techniques. If you have learned from this video, please do mention them in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please click the like button, help others to learn by sharing this video, please subscribe and turn on notifications for more such videos. Have a nice day.